Hey guys, it's Harley. I was on a trip last week to visit my sister for her college graduation in Texas, and then we went to New Orleans, and really, really fun trip and much needed, especially after all the technical difficulties I had on my videos the week before, which is why I haven't uploaded in over a week. Wow, just wow. I needed a vacation. All my footage got deleted that I worked very, very hard on, and I went a little bit crazy. Just a little. Anyway, I'm back today with a video all about moving indoor plants outdoors for the warm summer months. I know it can be kind of overwhelming to know which plants to bring outdoors and then what kind of process to follow to ensure your plants don't go into shock and die. So today I thought we would go over some of that and I hope this video is helpful for you. As always, if you have any additional tips, please leave them in the comments down below. The people that watch my videos and their houseplants will really, really appreciate the added information. So yeah. Yeah. With all of that being said, let's just get into it. It's not necessary to put your plants outdoors for summer and some people are like, we love houseplants, so why do we want to move them outside for summer? And that's totally fine to each their own. Me personally, I just like to move my plants outside for their own well-being. They get a lot more light out there. I'll take one for the team and not have as many plants indoors so that the plants that are outdoors can grow and they do grow a lot, lot more quickly when they're outdoors. So that's just kind of a benefit of putting them outside. But again, it's not completely necessary. I do also have like a back deck covered patio type thing that I love the look of having a whole bunch of plants out there and sit out there all the time and stuff. And it's just so nice to sit out there on a warm summer evening with cute little lights overhead, a bunch of tropical plants. It makes me feel like I'm in Mexico. That's just my own reasoning for putting them outside, but again, it's not necessary. So I guess kind of the first place to start is knowing which plants can go outside. And for the most part, within reason, any plant can go outside. The exception to this would be if you live in a super, super dry climate and your plant needs humidity. I've said this in every single video, you guys know, I live in a really dry state where there's like no humidity. Plants like begonias, Calatheas, things like that don't do well outdoors where I live. So just kind of do your research on where you live and knowing what type of environment that plant likes. So that's step number, why did I do this? I was gonna say that's step number one and I did this. <laughs> just know your plant's needs and use a little bit of logic when deciding which ones go outside. You need to know what temperatures your plant is hardy to. So for the most part, I wait for temperatures to be above 50 degrees before I'll move my plants outside. There are also some plant varieties that need the temperature to be 60 degrees or above. So just be sure you kind of know which plants are okay in what temperatures. Move a plant outside that likes to be in 70 degrees and you put it out in 50 degrees, it's probably going to die. And at the very least, it'll send the plant into shock and it may stun it for a while so there won't be new growth. And it might look a little sickly for a while. So that's just kind of another thing to know about your plant before moving it outside. Hoyas, philodendron, pothos, succulents and cacti, ficus. Most plants are going to be okay in 50 degree temperatures or above. Once you start noticing the temperature is hitting 50 degrees or above on some days, that's when you can start bringing them outdoors. And here's my process for kind of acclimating them outdoors a little bit more so that the heat isn't too intense for them. I check the weather the night before every single day so I can kind of make a game plan as to what I'm going to be moving outdoors the next day when it's warm. So I probably start getting 50 degrees temperatures end of March-ish. Even if there's one single day where it's 50 degrees outside, I will move my plants outside for that day. If the temperature says it's going to be in the 50s that night, I'll also leave them outdoors overnight. But it just has to be 50. So if I move them outside during the day and then at night it's going to be below 50, I'll bring them back indoors. I know it seems like a very tedious process, but I promise you your plants will be so much more happy if you do it this way. With that being said, if you've had success just plopping them all out there and leaving them out there and they do fine and that's great but me I stress too much doing that so this is what I do to ensure not only my plants health but also my sanity so that I can like think about other things instead of worrying about my plants all the time. As you're moving them outside be sure you're placing them in good spots so direct light indoors is a lot less strong than direct light outdoors. Even plants you have next to your south window inside I would not recommend just 
plopping it right out into full sun right away because that can burn the plant, it can really kill it and again, shock the plant. So what I do is as I'm starting to move plants from my inside to my outside is I'll put them in a shaded area. At the very most, I'll give them Eastern light so that they're getting morning sun, which isn't as strong as like afternoon and evening sunlight. I never, never just plop them out into full sun. Even like cacti and succulents that love full sun, I found once they're living indoors in my house, if I put them out into full sunlight right away they do burn so shade light to begin with but then as you start moving them outside more and more um, the longer they're outside the more you can kind of start moving them to full sun they'll get used to the temperature really well this way honestly I'm not too specific about it but kind of the method I use for when to like move plants from the shaded dappled sun areas I initially put them out in for about the first month I'm having to move my plants indoors during the night. Even now, there were weeks at a time where I, there were two weeks where I could leave my plants outside for that two weeks straight and they were t totally fine, living their best life. But like this week, it's 50 degrees during the day and then it's 40 and 30 during the night. So now I'm having to move them back indoors. Um, so I'll just bring them inside for the two weeks, put them back outside again. And then once they're able to be outside for like a week at a time straight, I'll start putting them into full sun during the morning and then I'll move them back into the shade during like the heat of the day. I know this seems like so much work, but really it's only a couple of months span where you're having to work really hard like this and then you can just kind of leave them be and they'll be fine on their own. Other than watering, remember to water them a lot because they will dry out more. And if I start to notice that any of the plants I'm moving into full sun, like seriously, during these couple of months, I'll go out there during the morning, afternoon and evening to check on the plants just to make sure everything's going smoothly. Um, I probably seem like a crazy lady spending so much time moving out there, but I promise you it's so worth it. And then really, you really get to just kind of ignore them and just enjoy them instead of going through this two months of like work. It, I mean, it's not work. It's really fun for we plant lovers. I'm sure you guys agree with me. The reward of having your plants grow so much bigger during the warm months and then being able to enjoy them over the miserable winter and feel like you're in a tropical paradise where your plants are like huge is really nice so it's 100 percent worth the extra effort in my opinion play it by ear do what you feel is right talk to your plants you know your plants your plants know you talk to them. Some big things I feel people kind of struggle with with moving them outdoors is A, watching the temperatures. So again, that's like my number one tip is watch the temperatures. Where I live, it can be literally 80 degrees for two weeks and then we'll have one random day where it's 30 degrees and snows. Like that has happened within the last few weeks. So yes, watch the temperatures closely, closely depending on where you live, of course, and then move them inside if it's cold. But also another really big thing I feel people don't remember about moving them outside is that the soil is probably going to dry out a lot, lot more frequently. So if I have a plant indoors and I'm watering it like once a week, if I put it outside, it's seeming like I have to water it three times a week instead. Be weary of that. Watch your plants kind of closely and keep checking in on them, especially as you're leaving them outside overnight and for several days at a time and things like that because an unwatered plant outdoors is probably going to die pretty quickly. Another thing I kind of do to start acclimating them to outdoor temperatures is, I keep saying it, but those days when it's over 50 degrees outside, I'll move my plants outside and give them a really, really good spray with the hose in the morning and then just let them sit out there. It does really well. They really really like it. It gives them a little bit of extra humidity, especially if you live in a state like I do. That is another great way to help acclimate them out there. And the plants that I primarily move outdoors are my ficus plants. Really, really love being outside in more sunlight. I also really like to move out uh, philodendrons outdoors. So my lickety split philodendron will probably go outdoors. Pothos do really, really well outdoors. Hoyas love it outside, particularly facing Eastern like morning light. So I hang mine facing Eastern light and it get they get kind of dappled Eastern lighting. So they really, really love that. My peperomia plants really like it outdoors in the shade. That's what I found so far. We'll see what happens this year. Sissus. I love my sissus outside because they are really fast growing plants indoors but if you move those suckers outside for the summer months they're going to be a heck of a lot bigger once you move them back indoors bridal bell loves it outside caladiums love it outside in shade my bird of paradise right here i'll actually be moving outdoors as well and that's basically it hmm 
I don't know what more I can say. That's all the information I have. But like I said, if you have any more tips and tricks for moving your indoor plants outdoors for summer, please leave them in the comment section. I really look forward to hearing your expertise because you guys are so smart. You're a lot smarter than I am. And my plants appreciate you. As usual, I'll have everything I use for my plants linked in the description box if you wanna pick them up for yourself. That is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you my next one. My neighbors probably think I'm crazy. <laughs>